WrestleMania 29 is going to top what we saw at WrestleMania 28. Do you think next year at WrestleMania, Legends will be treated the same way they were this year? I think every night of the 365-year, Legends should be treated the way they were at WrestleMania. And I think that a lot of fans uh, found themselves wishing at some point during the four-and-a-half-hour show... Uh, that legends were treated like this all the time. Unfortunately, it's not the case. Legends are not treated like this all the time. But uh, with WrestleMania getting close to its 30th anniversary, I guess WWE are starting to realize we have to give our legends the respect they deserve. Uh, Jim Ross actually even had an opportunity to call a couple of matches. He called the end of an era match. Uh, such a legendary voice and such a legendary match. I found that really appropriate. He called a couple of matches. Uh, this year's WrestleMania, he usually does. And uh, I think that if, uh, you know, circumstances uh, are in the right place, I think Jim Ross will return full-time because we're seeing so many legends return. This year we have The Rock, John Cena, Brock Lesnar, Chris Jericho, Kevin Nash, Booker T, all under contract and sometimes are on the active roster for special occasions. Uh, so I think that WWE has not had a more impressive uh, roster in the last couple of years than they have now. Uh, very impressive roster. The last time I saw the roster this active was probably back in 2003. And with Brock Lesnar now back in the WWE, uh, potentially going to be challenging John Cena for a couple of pay-per-views and having some involvement with The Rock and uh, CM Punk, of course, still the WWE champion after WrestleMania, defending it successfully against Chris Jericho, forcing Jericho to tap out in a relentless match and one of the best pure wrestling matches I have seen since Bret Hart versus Owen Hart at WrestleMania 10. Hart and Owen definitely gave you a wrestling match that was pure art at WrestleMania 10. And Jericho and Punk, I think, gave you the greatest pure wrestling match at WrestleMania. Top to bottom, the card was so spectacular. But this CM Punk-Chris Jericho match, uh, I think we want to see Chris Jericho versus CM Punk Part 2 after that because it was a pure wrestling match, about 20 minutes in length, hold for hold, counter for counter, move for move a succession of submission moves, a succession of high-flying maneuvers, a succession of technical wrestling, uh, two of the best in-ring generals of the 21st century. I think Jericho was brought back with a lot of hype. He delivered, showing no ring rust whatsoever. Uh, he hasn't been showing any ring rust, any signs of ring rust leading into WrestleMania, and he didn't show any at WrestleMania. So Jericho becoming the champion could be a potential outcome for a future pay-per-view, probably Extreme Rules. I don't really agree with Jericho's approach to the whole punk, uh, you know, alcoholism thing, uh, breaking the beer bottle or the liquor bottle, whatever you want to call it, over punk's head. I don't really agree with Jericho's method or Jericho's approach, but the storyline is interesting. And adding that whole uh, real-life scenario with punk's family in there, uh, heading into WrestleMania at the last minute, really added fuel to the fire for what was going to be a great wrestling match. It would look good on paper, and it delivered uh, when it was finally put off. WrestleMania top to bottom didn't provide us with any dull moments. I think from the beginning of the show right until the end of the show, it kept the majority of wrestling fans on the edge of their seat. You might have took your piss break during the Divas match. You saw Maria Menounos team with Kelly Kelly to take on Eve and Beth Phoenix. Beth is still the Divas champion, approaching the six-month mark as Divas champion. I guess they're holding off for Karma to return and have uh, her drop the title to Karma. Uh, Kelly Kelly seems to be a top contender still for that Divas Championship, especially coming out of WrestleMania with such momentum. And the draft coming up now in a couple of weeks, uh, that will really set the stage for what is going to be a spectacular year in the WWE because we have people like Brock Lesnar, The Rock, John Cena, uh, Triple H, uh, The Undertaker, all eligible to be drafted. So everybody in the company is eligible to be drafted, and a, a new season of WWE is set to start. Let's break this thing down uh, for you. The 18-second match with Daniel Bryan and Sheamus. I guess this is the best way of starting off the show as a, in terms of a breakdown. I wasn't expecting this. I thought Sheamus and Daniel Bryan were going to have a pure wrestling match. And you would think Daniel Bryan and Sheamus would have a pure wrestling match because this was the first time ever they would go one-on-one -on -one in a match at a show like WrestleMania. And with Daniel Bryan having such a prestigious career and such a phenomenal name for himself, that really insulted Daniel Bryan's career and everything he had accomplished up until signing with WWE and being a part of the inaugural NXT. That made the NXT rookies look really bad. Uh, and the whole fact that it was 18 seconds, I'm sure Sheamus was loving the fact that he didn't have to work 
uh, all that hard this year at WrestleMania to earn a world title. Hopefully when they give us the Daniel Bryan Sheamus rematch, uh, looks like Alberto Del Rio is going to be thrown in there somehow with his return and everything, uh, making up for a couple of months he lost. Um, I think that hopefully we're going to get a better pure wrestling match than what we saw at WrestleMania. I hope we get the match we wanted to see at WrestleMania when they have the rematch because that really uh, insulted Daniel Bryan, of anything, and it insulted Sheamus a lot, too, because Sheamus, of course, if you remember back in 09, was one of the fastest rising stars of the new talent initiative. They brought him in so quickly, made him champion, uh, one of the fastest rising stars in the last decade, going up against one of the greatest pure wrestlers on the independent circuit for over 15 years, Daniel Bryan, wrestling all over the world, and they have him go to WrestleMania 28, his first WrestleMania main event as champion, losing it within 18 seconds. King Kong, Bundy, JBL are different cases. JBL knew he was retiring back in 2009, so they have him lose to Rey Mysterio in 9 seconds, I think it was. Uh, that's okay, because J JBL made a lot of contributions to the wrestling business, and King Kong Bundy really didn't have much to do that year at WrestleMania when he had that six minute, a second long match. And Earthquake, I believe, was another one who had a short match at WrestleMania. I think it was at WrestleMania 10. Those are different cases, because there isn't much prestigiousness on those matches that lasted anywhere from 5 to 10 seconds. But when you have a match that was expected to be a pure wrestling match ruined that way, I think that was the only thing that was a flaw at WrestleMania and really stood out as a negative thing at uh, this year's WrestleMania, really letting me down because I wanted to see a pure wrestling match. We got it with Punk and Jericho, as I initially just said here on the show, uh, but we didn't get it uh, with Sheamus and Daniel Bryan. I'm sure a lot of wrestling fans who wanted to see a pure wrestling match that we're going to have to wait a couple of weeks uh, more to see. Uh, but I think eventually when it happens, we're going to get that great match between Daniel Bryan and Sheamus. Because Sheamus is a good pure wrestler, not as pure as Daniel Bryan, uh, really insulting his career. Of course, they have the good luck kiss, the tradition that AJ and Daniel Bryan have developed over the last couple of weeks on SmackDown. They do it at WrestleMania 28 with so much anticipation on this match. A bro kick later, we have a three count, and Sheamus is the world champion within 18 seconds. Uh, I think that that was absolutely atrocious. And now with uh, Alberto Del Rio back... Uh, that doesn't make sense to me at all. We should have this Daniel Bryan Sheamus thing uh, continue after WrestleMania without Alberto Del Rio. Give him something else to do. But it looks like we're going to have a three-way by the time we make it to Extreme Rules in just a couple of weeks. Happening within the same month of WrestleMania 28. I hope we get a good pure wrestling match between Daniel Bryan and Sheamus because this is what the fans want to see. And we got it with Punk and Jericho, so we went one for one. Uh, with pure wrestling matches. I'm not saying that other matches on the show didn't have great wrestling because The Undertaker and Triple H really put off a great match inside the Hell in a Cell and really ended an era in appropriate Triple H Undertaker style fashion uh, with Shawn Michaels as the referee re really adding fuel to the fire. Uh, but I think that the matches we were expecting to be the greatest pure wrestling matches of the last 10 years uh, really let us down. At least we got one good pure wrestling match out of Punk and Jericho. I'll never forget uh, the uh, quote that uh, Punk gave Jericho while he had him locked in the Anaconda Vice, Tap out, you son of a bitch. That will be the slogan of a WWE magazine uh, headline in months to come, or that'll probably be the highlight of Punk's DVD uh, when they do Punk's career perspective uh, for you. Tap out, you son of a bitch at WrestleMania 28. That was kind of hilarious. Uh, we had a 12-man tag team match. I guess I'll talk about this one next. It came on too late in the show. The place that this match was on at WrestleMania, this match probably should have been the second match into WrestleMania with how much uh, the detail and everything went into it. Very little detail went into this match. Uh, it probably should have been the second match on the show. I don't think it was a match everybody was looking forward to. I don't think fans care if we have one general manager or not. Uh, John Laronitis was the one who you almost could uh, decipher was going to win this match because, of course, criticism and controversy has associated themselves with John Laronitis uh, pretty well over the last 10 years, even before he was an in-ring performer with WWE. I think that controversy is definitely something that WWE is influenced by a lot. So with the amount of controversy that Laronitis has gotten over the last 10 years, it only made sense for his team to come out on top at WrestleMania. I didn't really agree with the method 
of how they came out on top. Eve comes out, turns on Zack Ryder with a low blow. The Miz capitalizes and remains undefeated at WrestleMania. Two big things came out of this 12-man tag team match. It wasn't how the wrestlers contributed to the match, which it should have been about. Uh, people like Mark Henry, Jack Swagger, uh, doing a phenomenal job. Uh, two things came out of this match. The Miz's performance and remaining undefeated, and the fact that Laronitis' team came out on top. Laronitis definitely had the more impressive team. He had a team comprised of about five or six former world champions. So I, I think that with the impressive team that Laronitis had and the controversy that surrounds his career over the last ten years, even before he became an on-screen un performer, uh, that definitely influenced WWE to give him the victory at this year's WrestleMania. How long he will remain in control of both shows still remains to be seen. I see Laronitis probably having a four or five month reign in control of both shows. Long enough to create enough controversy so that the board has to step in and appoint a second general manager of SmackDown or Raw. Uh, very interesting how this thing could play out. How weird would it be if the anonymous Raw general manager was unveiled uh, during Laronitis' reign of both shows, and we finally get a stamp of finality on the storyline that went right through to 2011, about two years ago. Uh, how foolish would it be if the anonymous Raw general manager was kind of unveiled? Uh, that would be kind of weird, but uh, I think that WWE is definitely heading in a very different direction with Laronitis now being in control of both shows, something we haven't seen uh, in years. Not one sole entity has been in control of WWE since probably Vince McMahon or Stone Cold Steve Austin was the CEO or they had the commissioner role uh, in effect back in the 90s. So it's, it's going to be really interesting to see how a sole entity uh, runs both shows, what kind of controversy, what kind of storylines, what kind of conflict he will find himself within. Obviously they're building a storyline between Laronitis and Punk uh, a couple of weeks out from WrestleMania. So it's going to be really interesting to see uh, how Laronitis and Punk uh, intermingle and how the superstars on SmackDown are going to intermingle with John Laronitis. It's going to be really interesting to see. Uh, Laronitis vows that Punk's going to uh, defend the title consistently now, so that's going to be really interesting to 